Now, one of the most important secrets that traditional mechanics taught you was what? I don't know about you, but for me, it was that motion can be described using two symmetric languages. One of them was linear and the other was, that's right, angular, which meant that any word in this language would have an analog, we called it, in the other language. Now, what was it for linear displacement? It was angular displacement, theta. And what was it for linear velocity? It was, that's right, angular velocity, which is usually omega. And for linear acceleration, it was alpha or angular acceleration. Now, whatever role mass played here, we said that this new thing called moment of inertia played over here. And that's just pretty much mass multiplied by the distance from the axis of rotation for a point mass. With all this, you actually know every single thing that you need to know to deal with this particular topic. And what we're going to do in this video is just to let you know that you already know it. So can we begin? Let's say that I have a bob of sort over here attached to a spring. It's, this could be a rope, okay? Anything that has enough thickness and that's it. And now, but instead of extending it like this that I would have done usually till now, I'm going to give it a twist. And now what is this twist going to do? So when you have something like a rope and you're twisting one part of it while holding the other, you're creating what's called a torsion and that wants to come back to position. And in that sense, this body over here, left to itself, is in a very good state of happiness, satisfaction. Yeah, the more boring and precise way of putting it is, it's in a state of safe, stable equilibrium because if I give this a twist, it's going to feed a force that will bring it back. Now, is it fair to call that a restoring force? Okay. Yeah. Uh, is that, is it fair to call that a restoring force? Or should I call it a restoring torque? So if I have this hanging over here, such that it doesn't fall this time, and if I give this a restoring, if I give this a force, some kind of a twist over here, and if I let it be, then what it feels can be called a restoring force. It's not really wrong. But what language do we use more preferably when we're dealing with solid bodies that are rigid, that are rotating about some axis? The entire chapter on that, right? Rigid body rotation. So we prefer to think of it as a torque. Right? So, a body over here that's been given this twist will feel a torque, a restoring torque back to its equilibrium position. Now then the question is, as you twist it more, this restoring torque becomes more and more. The, the stronger, the more you twist it, the harder it gets, right? You know this. If you take a piece of cloth and you try to wring it to get some water out of it, then you find that the harder you wring, it gets even more hard. Then, if you have it coming back though, because in the case of a cloth, it may not do that. If it comes back, and if it continues to have this force, then what can we say? Maybe, just maybe, this particular spring or that rope has a special property. That this restoring torque is proportional to the angular displacement from that particular equilibrium position. Now what would that mean? Now think about it, right? This would mean that this thing would oscillate about that equilibrium position, but it be something more special than that. And what is it? Now if I ask you, I've taken two bodies like this. I've twisted one, as you can see over here, a little bit. Small angle theta, say 15 degrees, and left it. And then another, another one, say 20 degrees, and I've left it. Now, one of them is covering a larger angular displacement in its oscillation, right? Because by symmetry, it's going to go 20 degrees to the other side. And this one's going to go only 15. And now I'm going to ask you, for this whole oscillation to get completed, which of them will take a longer time? And now there is a problem if you think about the answer, if you think you have to derive the whole thing again. Because you need not do that, right? All that we have done in asking this question is taken whatever we did with the linear spring and changed the words into angular words. Then we said if the linear displacement is x and another linear displacement is x dash, which is larger. Here we said some angular displacement, some larger angular displacement. Then we said the force is proportional to the linear displacement from the equilibrium position. Here we are saying the torque is proportional to the angular displacement. So all you have to do is what even a second sign kit can do, which is replace alphabets in your mathematics, you must get identical conclusions. If you don't, there's something very wrong. So all you're doing is take away in, in your old linear equations that you wrote for SHM, wherever you find force, put torque. Wherever you find displacement or x, put theta. Right? If you do all that, what must you get? You must get the answer that the frequency of this oscillation does not depend on the amplitude that you give it, the initial position that you give it. And because of that property, we can call this kind of oscillation angular simple harmonic oscillation. Why simple? Because it, it follows a rule of being directly proportional to displacement, right? Now this means that if you have a body 
and have given it some angular displacement while it was in a position of stable equilibrium and if you can assume that the whole system is going to perform angular simple harmonic motion then the restoring torque that you get will follow this condition the torque equals minus some k into theta now this can be written slightly differently right just like you wrote f equal to ma what's the analogous equation over here you can write that torque as i into alpha where i is the moment of inertia so if i alpha equals minus some k into theta so your alpha or angular acceleration will be minus k by i into theta now what is that k though for a linear spring your k was the stiffness constant right of that spring was that linear spring something very very similar over here you'll be given this value yeah it will be called the torsion constant of that particular spring so that's basically you know it gives you it's if it's larger than you get a large torque for some amount of it's a very very hard thing to twist that's what it would mean so this over here allows us to give an expression a general expression for this kind of angular simple harmonic motion and that also can be done how just take a linear simple harmonic motion equation because you spend a lot of time deriving that and just replace alpha by now must be easy right so over there you had x equals a cos omega t as long as the body starts from the extreme position let's stick with that even over here plus some phi for a general case so you have that over here what should you do now yeah for that x over there you put theta for a which is amplitude let's let's give a new name over here let me call it theta not yeah and using that just to say that's the maximum angular displacement that this body will undergo then inside you have omega t plus phi that's going to remain that way except that what omega means what omega stands for will change yeah what is omega over there it is root of k by m where k was the linear spring constant and m was the mass over here what should it become you just derive it right yeah if you're asking where did you derive it you did because you wrote minus k by i into theta will be equal to my alpha right so if you had solved the differential equation you would have got that omega square equals k by i therefore omega must be root k over i you're not doing this again because we expect better from you so in this equation we have omega standing for root k by i but one of the questions that remains for me is how do i interpret how do i visualize that phi in that equation over there because now i'm imagining say something like a line a rod that is oscillating going back and forth between minus theta and plus theta minus theta not and plus theta not rather about that equilibrium position and that's an oscillation and I'm, that's that's pretty easy to visualize and i also am visualizing parallelly a spring going back and forth but in this case it's very easy for me to understand what the initial phase is because if the spring started from that point over there somewhere in the middle it means that that angle is the phase the angle that that radius vector makes right above it right from the shadow metaphor that i have i visualize it as shadows but how do i do that over here i'm getting confused that my phi over there that angle is the initial angle that that line makes with my equilibrium position or with my extreme position but from what i understand that's got nothing to do with that yeah what's a better way to visualize phi when i'm dealing with angular shm or a torsional shm it is to understand that that theta over there is varying from some negative value to some positive value right that's what's happening and there's absolutely no meaning in looking at it as a circle anymore once you know that all you have to do is bring back your linear shm picture and just instead of marking minus x and plus x or minus a and plus a as the two ends you're going to mark minus theta not and plus theta not and that's it from then on it's as good as linear shm right because some quantity varying from some negative or some plus first positive value can be represented adequately on a straight line and now if that rod started at some angle theta you'll mark the angle theta over here and then draw a radius vector right on top of it and then find out what angle that makes i hope that made sense to you it'll make more sense as you solve some problems to understand faces in terms of angular shm and this whole uh, system which has a rope attached to the top and which is turning around like this is usually called a torsional pendulum and i know you're asking me now are you serious you're teaching me something called a torsional pendulum because you before you teach me a simple pendulum It's called a simple pendulum for a reason, right? Why are you teaching it to me before? For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.